take a look at uh, the whole industry and when you were appointed as uh, Minister of Communications, you were viewed as a silver lining within a very dark cloud. Uh, we had Harold Weso, the Acting Director General of the DOC, describing the DOC as a sinking ship. When you came um, into the Department of Communications, did you find that it was a sinking ship? Did you bring it to float once again? Let's say I found it a ship with a lot of holes <laughs> at the bottom, but it wasn't sinking. No, I think we've got a very good competent staff in the department. And, and I think that we've begun the process, as I did say in November, the process of rebuilding a culture, a different culture in the department. And I'm very positively encouraged that the response from the staff team has been fantastic. They're coming together at the leadership level. They're taking the rest of the team with them. They're beginning to deal with the vacancies. And there's a considerable enthusiasm that has emerged amongst. And you can see the success of our work today, that we were successful in mobilizing the CEOs and chairpersons of the top 30 ICT companies to spend a whole day with us. So we're very encouraged and I'm very positive that the department is going to grow from, uh, you know, from going to take leaps going forward. Uh, we're about to resolve the problem of the director general. We've advertised and we've had about over 39 vacants, 39 applicants for this position. The candidates look very impressive and we're in the process of making a selection. So we think we're on the right track. Let's touch on another uh, hot topic, uh, the likes of Telcom, and we know the golden shares, government's golden shares, uh, set to expire. It is something that everyone is still talking about, and also who's going to head up Telcom going forward, and the leverage that government will have after uh, the golden shares are expired. Uh, could you give us some <coughs> insight into this? And I'm sure um, you know it's a scenario that you, as the Department of Communications, has been playing out for some time now as to what the consequences will be going forward. Well, you know, we... we we read with great interest the speculation of the media on telecom. And it's true that uh, the golden share that government possessed over the last eight years will expire on the 4th of March. And we don't have any intention as government to retain all of the rights of the golden shares. But there are certain specific rights that we consider important to retain and we are currently in dialogue with Telcom on this matter and with the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Now, why do we want to do this? We want to do this because we still consider it very significant that government retains the shareholding it has in Telcom. And we don't think Telcom is a parastatal. We don't treat it as a parastatal. It's a listed company of which we have 39% interest in it. And the PIC has about 11. So together, government, you could say, has 51% interest and a controlling share. Now, we think it's important because it's about the only instrument we have in the telco sector for governments to be able to utilize to ensure that its policy objectives are being met. And there are critically important areas that we want to do. And there's work still to do. Firstly, we have to bring connectivity to the rural areas. Because there are still two vast sections of the country that are unconnected. <clears throat> Secondly, it's vitally important that we accelerate the implementation of broadband in this country. And we think telecom can play a crucially important role in that. <clears throat> the third one is that telecom is critically important because of the security of our communications infrastructure. So in those three arenas, it is clear to us that we cannot just dislodge telecom into a company that will be driven by just private shareholders. So the balance between the commercial interests of shareholders and the developmental priorities of the state is a tension that always operates in telecom and for that reason 
it's important that we retain it. And obviously a very strategic asset for you. One of the criticisms by the industry has been that uh, Telcom and the fact that it hasn't been so successful over the past few years with uh, various projects that it's undertaken is a management issue. And one of the reasons that uh, management has been an issue is because of a lot of government intervention. And you're talking about a fine balance and striking a balance between uh, government's role and the commercial corporate role. How do you plan to achieve this going forward? And seeing the success of Telcom, because a lot of people are concerned as to what fate lies ahead for the fixed line operator who has just launched a mobile offering as well? Well, <clears throat> I don't necessarily accept the view that Telcom's failings are as a result of government intervention. I think it's largely in the perceptions of commentators that make that. Certainly, government has appointed five directors who are there to represent its interests. And, uh, <clears throat> and if you look for some of the problems in telecom, it lies really somewhere else. And where does it And outside. I think that's, that we need to do far more better in making sure that the executive layer of leadership in telecom works a bit more better with the board. Uh, and that's a critically important connection. Uh, personally, I think that there has been far too uh, much latitude given to the executive leadership on how to run telecom. And one needs much more strategic direction from the board. And so we are busy discussing that. Uh, as you know, the uh, slate of directors that we've recently appointed has had a change in leadership. We've appointed Mr. Lazarus Zim, we think is a very competent businessman and uh, experienced in this particular sector and come with exceptionally good credentials. And he would make a, an excellent chairman. We've retained Mr. Jeff Molabella for his experience and indeed two of the directors that have been previously on the board. So we've got the kind of continuity on the leadership that we're happy with. And we've introduced an interesting personality uh, in the person of Mr. Naveen Kapila, who has got something like about uh, an experience over 30 years in the telecom business in emerging markets, and who is uh, very well in tune to the right kind of investment decisions, and works very closely as an advisor to the International Telecommunications Union. So we think we've got a very good team. Tell us about local loop unbundling at this point. We know you've got a deadline for November this year. Um, a lot of concerns <coughs> about the impact that local loop unbundling will have on the industry, whether it is going to create more competition. Uh, I know that you've also been talking about the model um, that is going to be brought forward with regards to this and the role that telecom could perhaps play. Um, could you add some insight into that? I'm sure that you've also been playing out various scenarios as to how this is going to work. Well, I think that the telecom space is something you must watch very carefully. There could be some very interesting developments going forward. On the local loop unbundling thing, the regulator tells me that they're very much on track with the project to unbundle the local loop by November. I can only go by what they say because it's their program of work. But the matter that's under debate right now is the nature of the model of unbundling that we want to follow. There might be some interesting things that come out of that. Well, we'll wait to hear on that. Uh, looking at a spectrum and a spectrum allocation, also a very hot topic. Yeah. We're talking about an auction happening. Some industry players say that it shouldn't even be something that is auctioned. Are you planning to change anything, the formula that we're looking at at this point, or is spectrum definitely going to be auctioned in South Africa going forward? I think that, that the regulator is very much in track with auctioning the spectrum. We're looking at the details of how they actually execute that, and that will happen.